and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a haul. I went crazy last month and I purchased 15 makeup products in one month. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard myself say. And I'm absolutely not proud and I hope to curve this horrible habit. Uh, but I thought that it's only fair that I take advantage of my insanity and share it with you and tell you what I picked up last month. As some of you may know if you watched my most recent video which was a long time ago, I decided that I cannot in all honesty believe that the makeup I was buying was cruelty free, especially not as a Palestinian living in Israel. There needs to be so much more discussed and many more requirements for me to think of a product as cruelty free. So I refuse to consider my makeup as a sort of activism. I refuse to uh, only buy things that are cruelty free because I don't believe that anything I buy is cruelty free. And I cannot stop consuming because I'm just not interested in doing that, to be honest. I want to take advantage of the craziness that went last month and create a video about it. We're going to title it a classic haul. A classic makeup haul. So, without any further ado, we can start talking about the makeup that I bought. I think I want to start off with the only lip products that I bought last month, which are these two Glow Play uh, lipsticks from MAC. The one that's on my lips is called Greatly Admired, and it's basically this. These are basically like tinted lip balm type products. They're very sheer and very easy to apply. In fact, I can just apply it without even a mirror and I think I look just fine. That's the first color. The second one that I purchased is in the shade That Tickles and it's a browner kind of bricky shade. This is the color. I really, really, really love these. Uh, I have loved wearing these and I have definitely enjoyed the whole concept of tinted, barely tinted, mostly sheer lip products and I'm planning on purchasing only one from Givenchy. I really can't remember what the product is called but there's a range that I've been looking at and I think I'm gonna pick myself only one of these because I'm interested in trying this type of product a little bit more and exploring more options. Alright, let's talk about everything else from MAC because I went to MAC and I purchased a few things. Speaking of Glow Play, I decided to try the Glow Play blushes and oh my gosh, I really, really, really love them. Today on my cheeks I'm wearing the shade Blush Please. But I also love the other one that I purchased, which was in the shade No Shame. Blush Please is so pretty. I love wearing these and I love applying them with a dual fiber kind of stippling brush. This is the shade Blush Please and it's so perfect. Like I just adore, adore this color. It's really nice. The other color is much more bold and much more of a statement. But it's such a healthy sort of color. It's really great. I love it. This is in the shade No Shame. It's absolutely stunning. And more from MAC. There are only two more products from MAC. I know, I went a bit crazy. I remember that I used to really enjoy using the uh, MAC Strobe Cream as a mix in with my foundation. I used to have a pinker shade but I decided I want to try the golden one. And this is the color, this is the Strobe Cream Hydrant, I don't know, whatever, this word Luminux, it's like French for luminizer maybe. Uh, and I have the shade um, Gold Light. 
this is what I mixed into my foundation today. I feel like it looks really nice over top of my cheekbones without foundation on this where I'm wearing nothing and I love mixing it in with my foundation. I feel like it gives my foundation a nicer, more creamy texture while giving it a more glow from within type of finish. I really really enjoy this and I'm glad to have it in my collection. Last but most certainly not least, we're starting off with eyeshadows because everything else aside from the brush set is all eyeshadows. The only eyeshadow that I picked up from MAC is the, uh, what is it called, Extra Dimension? Yeah, Extra Dimension uh, eyeshadow in the shade Sweet Heat. I have been hearing about this range a lot from State of Kate. I really enjoy her content and I've also been hearing her talk about these a lot and I trust her opinion so much and let me tell you that none of the none of these products disappoint. She talks a lot about the shade Amorous Alloy. I think that that shade is a bit too much for my collection at the moment. So I thought that this was something that my collection could use better. Sweet Heat was the shade that I picked up inspired by State of Kate's uh, raving about the shade Amorous Alloy from the same line. And I must say that I really, 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 really like this shade. I think that it's light enough for me to wear day in and day out. I can see myself wearing this very often. And I also really like the finish. I feel like the finish is shiny and slightly like shimmery where you can see a bit of texture, a bit of nuance, a bit of interest. But it's not like metallic and uh, too dramatic for day-to-day -day wear for someone like me. I really really like this and I highly recommend these shadows overall. I feel like they have some really really sweet, nice pretty shadows to wear for all occasions. There's cool tones, there's warm tones, there's light, there's dark, there's a bit of color mixed in. But I honestly think that the shade Sweet Heat is the one that I would keep and the one, the only one that I would have out of all of them. If you're someone like me who is a bit of a coward when it comes to bold eyeshadows, um, maybe this would be the one to pick up? I, I, I don't know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Anyway, next up let's talk about the only Chanel eyeshadow that I purchased. This is the Chanel, um, what is this thing called? Ombre Premier Lac. I have the shade 32 Vastness and it looks like this. This is what it looks like. It's, it's like a taupey purple brown. It's really nice. It's a bit dark but when it's blended properly it looks really really pretty and it's extremely long wearing. This is one of those liquid shadows that once it dries and I try to rub it in, not even the sparkly bits come off on my finger. It's really, 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 really transfer proof, very long lasting. And overall, I'm really, really pleased with this. I really like it. If you'd like to see me use it in one of the Get Ready With Me's, you can definitely let me know. I'm all ears. I would like to get a recommendation for what you'd like to see me use in an upcoming video. Now, uh, the rest are all powder eyeshadows. They're either from Shiseido or from Dior. I have them... I'm gonna swatch all of them because I think it's more fun. Uh, I have them paired in complementary similar eyeshadows. So let's get started with the first pairing. This is the Shiseido Horo Horo Silk which is the number 02 and this is the Dior uh, 530 tool satin. This is the Dior one as it's pretty obvious and this is the Shiseido one. In terms of packaging the Shiseido one is a bit is magnetic so it's uh, it doesn't have like any click to it or anything unlike the Dior one. And also the Dior one is removable. You can remove these right here and it comes with those like Dofa applicators. I don't know why they still use Dofa applicators or they still have them in eyeshadows. I think nobody uses them anymore. But hey, who's to say what people around the world use? 
apparently if they still have them in palettes then maybe they still use them anyway that's besides the point these are the tones that I picked from the Dior and the Shiseido lines that I think are pretty similar because they're the lightest this one right here is the shade tool and now you're gonna see the difference in finish this one right here is the shade Horo Horo Silk 02 from Shiseido obviously they are really different in finish in terms of the finish and once swatched uh, Horo Horo Silk is more pink toned whereas Silk is definitely more of a neutral leaning towards being yellow um, yellow toned uh, now that's not to say that Shiseido is always going to be superior in terms of the effect because I feel like Tool is meant to be this no shadow shadow sort of product it's supposed to be very like am I wearing anything on my lids to begin with but why are my lids looking so beautifully luminous and healthy that's the type of effect that I feel they were going for when they formulated this shadow specifically then moving on to the shades let's go like from lightest to darkest okay moving on to these um two we have the shade four subi subi beige and the shade 573 nude satin nude dress satins in the satin finish so let's get to swatching both of them this one right here is the Dior satin wait nude dress and then this right here is the Shiseido uh, Subi Subi beige 04 And these are both of them swatched on the back of my hand, just for reference. I feel like they're definitely different in terms of undertone. The Dior one is much, much more gold, whereas the Shiseido one is even a bit orangey, a bit warmer, and uh, less luminous, less shimmery. Uh, that being said, I feel like well, they both apply very, very evenly. They look gorgeous on the lids. They blend evenly. They last forever. I'm overall really impressed with both formulas. Next up, let's do the boring ones first before we move on to the taupes. Let's do the browns. So I picked up the shade Poncho Satin from Dior. And the shade... Five Zoku Zoku Brown from Shiseido, which is this. All right, this is the Dior one, and this one right here is the Shiseido one. They're so pretty. I love them both equally for different reasons. Now, okay, now let's talk differences. The Dior one is less warm toned, but I wouldn't say that it's cool. I think it may be like just neutral uh, and it's overall metallic. The Shiseido one has shimmer particles in it, golden shimmer particles that are different than the tone of the shadow itself. So there is a bit of contrast between the shadow and the shimmer which makes it look more interesting in my opinion because it almost gives it kind of a dual chrome effect in one light it looks like a warm toned orange and then it looks more golden it's really really nice I wouldn't call it a dual chrome don't misunderstand me however because of the difference in the glitter and the tone 
in different lighting it looks a bit more nuanced a bit more complex and i really really like complex and nuanced so no complaints finally let's talk about what's on my eyes i am so in love with it it's the shiseido uh, beige mitza i mean thanks to amanda z this color grabbed the attention that it deserves and once i picked it up I was hooked. I was sold and I wanted more of the Dior ones, which explains why I got three more than this. I have four of these now. The formula is beautiful. And the alternative, in brackets, in quotation marks, is the shade 8, Suru Suru Taupe. Beige Mitz is in the number 654, and the other one is in the shade 0808. Let's get to swatching. Oh, absolutely insane. And this is a uh, Suru Suru Taupe. It kind of looks uninspired and a bit dull. But once you swatch it, it is crazy. So pretty. I love these so much. So, so, so much. Wow. Now, the Shiseido one is more sheer and less pigmented, but I feel like it is more contrasting on my skin tone because it's a bit kind of pinky. Whereas the Dior one isn't pinky in my opinion. It's even a little bit of a golden taupe. It lends itself to a more yellow toned complexion it allows it to blend into yellow toned complexions a bit better than the uh, Shiseido one that's why they're a bit different also they're different in finish I feel like the Shiseido one is less metallic uh, and more kind of wet it doesn't look it, it lacks this texture that the other one has and it looks smoother, it looks like this surface of clear water. Well, not really clear, tinted water, whereas the other one looks like there's maybe like some sunlight on top of the surface that's just like gleaming and glistening and making it look a bit more than just the surface of a tinted, I don't know, tinted lake if that makes any sense. Now, since I swatched these eyeshadows, let's swatch the MAC one and the Chanel one. We're swatching the Chanel one right here. And let's do a bit of blending. Here we go, this is the Chanel uh, shadow in the shade 32 Vastness. And let's do MAC on the other side. MAC Sweet Heat again. Oh, look at that, it's so pretty. And it's really beautiful on the eyelids. Here you go, this is MAC. I, I don't know how it happened, but I basically ended up with 10 eyeshadows, 10, 10 single eyeshadows in one month. I have never, ever felt more ridiculous in my life, especially considering that these are all really expensive eyeshadows. It's not like I bought 10 Colourpop singles or something like that. No, I went and I purchased the most expensive makeup almost the most expensive eyeshadows and I collected 10 of them I cannot believe myself however overall like they're so pretty how can I not feel like I didn't just go too crazy and buy the most unnecessary eyeshadows I could find so no yeah, I'm not no regrets no regrets 
finally, for this mad haul, I decided to buy a set of Real Technique brushes that came with their sponge. So this is the sponge that we all know. I have no idea what... Okay, this is a deluxe crease brush that I think will come in handy as a cream nose contour and cream eyeshadow type of brush or even like concealer but I don't use a separate brush for concealer and it comes with the expert face brush which I already have in a different kind of handle but it's nice to have another one because these brushes are really really nice I also have another one of these brushes this is the setting brush right yes uh, I use the other one for a highlighter maybe I can use this as under eye powder or just as a backup or even like an all-over kind of cut like wash of color on my light on my lids and finally this is the reason why I did this haul or this specific purchase I purchased the blush brush from Movie Techniques I feel like I have been using smaller brushes for blush and I would like to try something big uh, for my powder for my powder blushes not for these I don't think but I'm excited to be trying this out um, in the upcoming month so um yeah that is it this is the end of this wild haul I think since I'm not going to upload a favorites video because all I did was use my new products um, I'm just going to upload this haul and tell you that overall I've enjoyed everything. I don't have a single regret in terms of products that I think are duds, but I definitely regret this amount of makeup in just one month. I think that it should have been cut down by so much. Just like one single shadow, one blush, one lip product would be more than enough. I don't know how this happened and I definitely don't want to see this as a recurring theme in my makeup purchasing life absolutely but yeah that's it for today's video thank you so so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video I know if you live in a country that has a Sephora sale what did you pick up and if you don't live in a country that has a Sephora at all like me did you buy any makeup this month? And if so, what did you buy? And what do you have your eyes on? I have my eyes on three things. I have my eyes on one of the M Cosmetics um, Heaven's Glow blushes in the pinky one, the pinky tone. And I have my eyes on the Cojendo foundation. I would love to try that one. And I also have my eyes on the Givenchy uh, sheer lip balmy type of lip product like almost a glow play but from Givenchy that's what I'm looking for word that's what I'm looking forward to trying maybe in the next several maybe two months hopefully in two months I'll buy three products that would be <laughs> ridiculous purchasing so much makeup in just one month don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment down below as I said I hope to see you soon in the next video maybe. Bye-bye.